Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Uh, joining me here today is Nick. Nick, say hi. Nicholas Trostomatos with uh, AWS, uh, Partner Solutions Architect, supporting Red Hat services on AWS. Right, so uh, Nick, uh, been working with us for very, many, many years. I remember you back in the day when you were still at Red Hat. You've gone from there to VMware, you've gone to IBM, so you've gone around the block a couple of times. I want to talk about certifications and compliance. Sure. So uh, application platforms in a, in a public sector context. So when we talk about certification and Compliance, and let's zoom in ever so slightly. Let's talk about this in the context of managed OpenShift on AWS. So the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, ROSA, which is a managed implementation of OpenShift, and it is a joint solution, uh, which means AWS and at Red Hat jointly engineer it and, and to some degree jointly offer the solution. So in terms of certifications, uh, many of our customers are sitting in a public sector context. What certifications does ROSA already have in place that might be meaningful to, say, a financial institution or somebody in the public sector space? So a lot of them are going to be um, the ones that AWS already supports, right? So we're talking about things like SOC 1, SOC 2, um, Type 1, Type 2, uh, and PCI DSS. SOC 2, uh, Type 1. And Type 2. And Type 2. And PCI DSS. Uh, PCI DSS. PCI is something that I hear very, very frequently coming from the financial side of things, the financial Absolutely. institutions. Uh, these certifications are already there using ROSA straight away. When customers are talking about uh, encryption processes, uh, really securing the backends, I'm seeing something like FIPS coming up quite frequently. Yes. Can you run me through what is FIPS? Is it already in place? Is it something that's coming? Uh, what is the customer journey for getting that implemented? Uh, with their OpenShift implementation? So theoretically, FIPS is already implemented, um, but you have to actually enable it through a flag. Um, and so we actually have enabled that through um, a way where when you're provisioning a ROSA cluster, you could actually use a, a ROSA uh, and a FIPS flag to enable the end-to-end -end encryption. So this is done through the, the install and provisioning process. I'm assuming That's this correct. is the ROSA CLI. That is correct. And you, we see this obviously with financial services, with um, um, very high touch agencies that require end-to-end -end encryption, right? So encryption of data at rest, encryption of data in motion, uh, encryption of workloads, things along those lines is where we really start to see a lot of the FIPS. So stuff. two things here, you mentioned that uh, FIPS encryption is already in place and you mentioned a flag, so I'm assuming something like a uh, ROSA create Cluster and then literally like a dash dash FIPS. Yep, correct. FIPS. Now that, that's kind of cool. So what I'm expecting here, and keep me honest, uh, cluster provisioning is going to build out all of the underlying AWS resources, the EC2 instances, the load balancers. It'll provision OpenShift as a software correct. stack, and then it's going to not only enable all of the encryptions. What about all of the other secret source that's being added in in terms of ROSA being a managed solution? I'm thinking things like telemetry and stuff. Yeah, so that's the great thing about it. It actually handles all of the heavy lifting of those components as well to make them FIPS compliant. So technically, it, in, the, in the past, you would enable a ROSA cluster, then you could turn on all of those services individually if you wanted to on your own. By using that FIPS uh, flag specifically within it, it actually does all of that telemetry, all of those configurations to make everything FIPS compliant. And then on the back end services that manage that ROSA cluster, it turns all of that telemetry on and that encryption as well, so that that's all FIPS compliant. So this is FIPS compliance all the way from the back end from Red Hat SRE teams that are managing this for the customer all the way through to the customer yeah. themselves. And I think it's really important to focus on that because being a managed offering, you have both the service itself and then you have the management group, the SRE team that's managing those components and those pieces, right? So you have to have encryption end to end for both of those individual components and pieces. Not And, and all with dash dash fips. Just dash dash fips. <laughs> <laughs> Anything simpler than that could be dash dash f, but I think that <laughs> might be oversimplifying things. 
Uh, for customers in the healthcare space, uh, HIPAA certification. Um, now, first things first, HIPAA is not a technology or a product certification. It's not something that you take a piece of software and you tick a bunch of tick boxes and yep. you then have that product meeting HIPAA. It's more process, it's more organizational definitions. It is. Right, so for HIPAA, uh, we've very, we haven't certified ROSA, and that's not an R, uh, ROSA for HIPAA, but instead what Red Hat has done, because this is a joint solution, because there is an SRE team managing this, the customer cannot go through their HIPAA journey on their own because the customer has no fingers in the pie of the Red Hat SRE team or their change control process. Correct. So what Red Hat has done is they have gone and taken all of their back-end cloud services. So these are all of the Red Hat cloud services. This is how the SRE teams interact with the ROSA clusters. This is their change control process. This is their security, their escalation paths. And they have taken everything that Red Hat is in control of, of this managed solution, and they've taken that through HIPAA certification. And these services are now uh, HIPAA certified. So now when customers want to take ROSA through their own internal HIPAA certification, the customer, be this a uh, company that's writing software for the medical industry, or whether this is a hospital themselves, Correct. that customer takes their process, their tooling, their infrastructure through the HIPAA journey, and they just add what Red Hat has already done uh, to that. So this is going to greatly simplify that journey for customers. Uh, Nick, one question. So one thing that comes up quite frequently is when I'm talking to a, a customer, whether it is a, a financial institution or somebody in public sector, there's usually a requirement to validate or confirm, provide some evidence that these certifications are in place. It's not good enough for us for writing them on a screen. So what is that process? How do I get a tangible document yeah. to, to prove this? So uh, Red Hat actually has an alias that you could email to get all those um, certifications and, and basically hard copies of all of this stuff. It's, um, it's sd-compliance at redhat.com. We want to throw that up there. sd-compliance at redhat.com. Redhat Com. Uh, reach out to that team and they will provide customer addressed versions of that documentation Absolutely. with all the certification that you are specifically needing for. Um, there is a much longer list of things that is still in the pipeline that hasn't arrived yet. I think off the top of my head, uh, I know that we're working towards FedRAMP support. Yes. Um, ROSA in GovCloud is on the roadmap. Uh, that's probably going to happen just before we see any tangible FedRAMP. Uh, in other parts of the world, I know if I look at Australia, New Zealand, uh, we've got IRAB, which is uh, yep. on, the, on the pipeline. So watch the space. Uh, I, I think we are going to see a very rich, growing list of certifications here. Yeah, and I think the other important thing is if there are certifications that customers are looking for, that they can actually email SD Compliance as well and, and request that those that be added to the roadmap. All of the ROSA roadmap is actually publicly available, so people can actually go and add on their, um, you know, they could raise issues and tickets and requests and try and add things to the roadmap as well. Because we would love to hear feedback from customers as to what things that they're, you know, specifically trying to address. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, that that uh, roadmap's currently a public-facing Git repository, so as Nick mentioned, just go in there, add uh, to the issues, and you can see as these... Uh, items are progressing, they get updated in that roadmap. Uh, Nick, as always, thank you very much for joining me yeah. and pleasure having you here. Yeah, thanks. And thank you for joining us.